Good afternoon and greetings from San Juan, Puerto Rico. The skies are blue and the water is beautiful and the sands are lovely. And wow. And I am right now free from the drama train. My name is Martin Coward and thank you for joining me today for Noonday Meditation and Contemplative Prayer Power Hour. We intentionally take some time out and get off the drama triangle in order to renew ourselves and plug in to a higher source of power. So what is this drama triangle? Are you trapped on it? I got to tell you, shortly after Trump was elected president, I was, I've been a political activist all my life. I was a, an activist for gay rights, I've marched, I've done all that kind of stuff. And, and what I've got to say is that, is that it's easy to get pulled into the drama in an ineffective way. Because behind I, I want to get into the drama is a love for change. But if we get caught up in the drama triangle, we're in the shadow of the part that's so powerful. So what I'm going to, the, the drama triangle is the shadow of the authentic self. It's the part of us that feels like the victim. It's the part of us that wants to go out and kill someone sometimes for being so stupid. It's the part that wants to rescue the world from its own insanity. We've all been there. We all are there all the time because we all want to be effective. We all want to be loved. We all want to make a difference. And so behind the, the, the behind that the drama triangle is our heart space. But the drama itself, the victim and the perpetrator and the rescuer, those are the three personalities, if you will, of the drama triangle. And we can so easily get caught up in that space that we, we, we lose focus. And so the whole idea of a contemplative practice is to stop and slow down and get ourselves off of the drama triangle. So my encouragement for you today is to say, how are you on the drama triangle? And, and, and how do you get pulled in? I remember after Trump was, I, I was determined to get on Facebook and save the world from this horrible situation as if I could do something. That's my ego thinking. I'm going to be the rescuer of the world because what I think and what I believe, I'm the center of the earth and, I'm, and I need to be a part. Do you see how that can kind of be the shadow side of something good? That's what the drama triangle is. It's the shadow side. It's the ego side of our heart. So the value of getting off the drama triangle is that we can transcend the, the narcissistic needs of the ego to win, to rescue, to be ahead, to conquer, to perpetrate, to, to, to whatever we got to do to get to be right, to go into battle. It's a violent way of being, actually. Think about it. Because we want to, we'll do anything to get our way because we believe we're right. That's the nature of our ego. So when we think we're right and the other person is wrong, we want to get in there and we want to do battle. And that's what the drama triangle is. However, there's never been any real effective change from being in drama. Hey, Mindy, how are you today? Happy Monday. Good to see you here. How are you feeling? Greetings from San Juan, Puerto Rico. We're talking about, have you, ever, have you ever been trapped on the drama triangle, Mindy? Have you ever uh, found yourself being a victim or being the perpetrator? You can't be one without the other. We've all been there. We've all wanted to retaliate against people who've done harm against us. And um, so we all want to find ways to retaliate from people who've hurt us or institutions that have hurt us, systems that have hurt us. 
And then there's a part of us that the ego that wants to be the rescuer. You know, I want to, I want to create, I want to, I want to rescue the world from this evil tyrant. You know, I want to wake everybody up. <laughs> it doesn't work. And a wise man said, I think the wise man was Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem at the same level of consciousness that created the problem because the drama triangle is what creates all the problems. And just look, notice the news when it comes on. I don't care if you're looking at a liberal channel or you're looking at a conservative. It's all pulling you in through fear and drama. And just notice how you feel when you watch it. Just notice next time you turn on the news, next time you get pulled into social media, if you're going in, if you want to, do you want to rescue people? Do you want to save the world? Do you want to break somebody's neck? Or do you want to feel sorry for yourself and want somebody to come save you? All of these are just normal. All of these. Oh, a black bear was chowing down on your garbage. Well, there must have been some really good garbage. And if you got a black bear enjoying it. That's a, that's a good bit of drama right there, right? <laughs> that's a different kind of drama. That's just real life between man and nature, right? So the idea here is that we come together as contemplative, contemplatives, people who have a contemplative practice, mystics like those of you who are watching with me and joining me every day. We do this because we want to step into our power. We want to really find a way to actually create effective change. And for, for Christians, we can look to our leader, which is Jesus, who was a, a revolutionary, if you will, a revolutionary for change. He was executed, really, by the Roman Empire for being a leader of nonviolent resistance against the empire. Other people have been killed as well. Martin Luther King was assassinated for being the uh, for being a nonviolent resistance against the empire of, uh, of the oppression of of, of, um, of, of civil rights, of inequality for, for African Americans. Harvey Milk was another nonviolent resistor, leader of nonviolent resistance against the empire against. For, for, for LGBTC people. And so we've got wonderful examples, Nancy Mandel, we've got one, Gandhi, we have wonderful examples of people to teach us how to solve problems, how to affect change. So if we want to, if we want to, if we want to tilt the arc toward justice, as Martin Luther King would say, we need to let go of our need to live on the drama triangle and transcend that egoic place to a deeper place within where our power is. And if enough of us do this, if enough of us participate in this movement of nonviolent resistance against the empire, against social injustices, we will affect change. We are affecting change. And that was the topic of, uh, and that was the topic today of Richard Rohr's uh, meditation piece. I won't read in a second because. That's what this is what inspired me because it's so true that people think contemplative are just people who go well, hide hermits and go hide off in the bushes somewhere and and, 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 and gaze at their navels. We are anything but contemplatives are the people who are the ones who who had the courage and the resilience to let go of this of the need uh, of the drama to step into a power deeper, bigger than themselves. That's what's exciting. That's what's exciting. So let's see what let's see today. What hello, Darso? How are you doing today? I bet that bear was beautiful. You stayed a good distance away, I hope too. You don't want to create any unnecessary drama. <laughs> so let's see what Richard Rohr he says. Change comes from the inside, and from those who all of you are watching, they know who Richard Rohr. Being peaceful, change. Change comes from the inside. As we come to know our soul gift more clearly, 
we almost always have to let go of some other gifts so we can do our one or two things with integrity. Such letting go frees us from being driven by what has been called the tyranny of the urgent. Soon urgency is a way of life and things are done peacefully from within. What if we choose to simply do one or two things wholeheartedly in our lives? What if we choose to do, to simply do one or two things wholeheartedly with our lives? Brene Brown is about people who live wholehearted lives. That's what this is about. Contemplatively wholehearted lives Focus on a single intention, and that intention is usually to serve for the betterment of mankind. To add value. That is all God expects and all we can probably do very well. Too much work becomes a violence to ourselves and finally to those around us. You notice yourself when you when you get too vigilant for a cause, too vigilant because we know we're so right that often we become violent, we become perpetrators. That our rescuing effort becomes an effort of violence. And that's what we want to avoid. That's why we want to pay attention when we get caught on trapped on that on that drama triangle. And how do we get off of it? Through contemplation, through prayer and meditation, through going deeper inside ourselves. Let's just use our different gifts to create a unity in the work of service and back one another up without criticism or competition. Only in our peaceful, mutual honoring do we show forth the glory of God, our creator? The gospel is not about being nice. It is not about being nice. It is anything but being. We're not talking about being nice. <laughs> it's about being honest and just, and the world doesn't like those two things very much. Isn't that true? The dominant culture does not like honesty and justice. Well, that's coming to an end. Because the world is coming off the drama train. Our job is to learn how to be honest, but with love and respect. Our job as contemplatives, as courageous men and women who are on a mission of nonviolent resistance against social injustices is to learn to be honest, but with love and respect for everyone. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. taught us that before we go out to witness for justice, we have to make sure that we can love and respect those with whom we disagree. Imagine, we're gonna to get to the art of surrender now. Imagine the surrender necessary for those who've been oppressed for hundreds of years to continue to work peacefully for justice. And that goes for all of us, gay people, people of color, women. It's exciting that the Divine Mother is really coming forward. Frankly, I don't know how anyone can do it without contemplation. This is what you do. I don't either. Contemplation is simply going inside and realizing who and what we are with our guidance. That's what mystics do. We 
we have claimed the divinity within ourselves and are willing to become servants to that divine purpose. And that's a very exciting place to be. And how do we get to that deep place where we do not want to publicly, publicly expose, humiliate, or defeat our opponents, but rather work, as King said, for win-win situations. I'm gonna read that one more time. How do we get to that deep place where we do not want to publicly expose, humiliate, or defeat our opponents, but rather work, as King said, for win-win situations? Seeking win-win situations, not win-lose, takes a high level of spiritual development and demands spiritual conversion, transformation. This is not for the weak at heart, man. <laughs> it takes courage. It takes a lot of courage. It's courage to let go and surrender all your beliefs and opinions about the world. So that a bigger force can guide you to come forward. That's what surrender is. It's surrendering of the ego, and that takes courage. But it builds weakness. When we hurt, we want to hurt back. When we're put down, we want to put down the opponent. This is our ego's natural defense mechanism. We all move toward the ego, and when and we even solidify it as we get older, if something doesn't expose it for the lie that it is. Hello. Not because it's bad. It's just doing its job, actually. No, we, don't, we, we don't want to, it's not because the ego is bad, but because it thinks it's the whole thing. It thinks it's you. It thinks it's the creator. It wants to be the creator. It wants to control, manipulate, and change the world for its own narcissistic needs. No matter how violent, it may be, it may be wonderful, wonderful ideas and aspirations. But if it's coming from a place of violence, then it's not coming from the heart. And you can know that for how is it making you feel? Is it make, when you get on the drama track, you know you're there because you don't feel good. It does not feel good to be trapped on the drama track. So what most of us try to do is we try to fight our way off. Defend our way, rescue. We get on. We jump from corner to corner, trying to get off. What we have to do is we have to let go of the train. We have to let go of our need to be right. We have to let go of our need to win, so that a higher purpose within us, love, love created, can come forth and actually create a more efficient and a more effective movement for change. The ego thinks it's the whole and only thing. But I'm on the drama triangle. I think I am the center of the universe. I am so important. And Lord, without me, the world would not survive. You better get me. You better hire me to do this job. <laughs> we change from the inside. From the power position to the position of vulnerability and solidarity, which gradually changes everything. True contemplation is the most subversive of activities because it undercuts the one thing that normally refuses to give way, our natural individualism and narcissism. Hello there, Cousin Mary Jo. Nice to see you here. Glad you joined me this Monday. How are you feeling today? 
We're talking about the drama triangle and how we use contemplative prayer and our contemplative praxis to untrap us, to get us off the drama triangle. ML Keys, the love community society based on justice, love, and unity. Exactly. These were all movements. But I believe because of COVID-19, it's making all of us wake up and realize this is that is the purpose. And if there were dots to collect or connect, it's these various communities that were started by Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, Harvey Mill, Nelson Mandela, and countless others. And now we've even got people like Tony Robbins, financial influencers, who are talking the same language, who are part of the same movement. This is happening. This is happening as we speak, and it's very exciting. I'm going to read that one more time. I think this is so cool. True contemplation is the most subversive of all activities because it undercuts the one thing that normally refuses to give way. Our natural individualism and narcissism, our ego. <laughs> Once we are free from our narcissism that thinks we are the center of the world or that our rights and dignity have to be defended before other people's rights and dignity, we can finally live and act with justice and truth. People don't really change by themselves. This is important. This is just kind of snuck in here at the end. It's God that changes. So it's through contemplation that we prepare ourselves. We come willingly to the grace of God, that transformation can wake us up to the truth of who we are. And within that practice, it gets easier and easier. Because joy wants to come out, but our egos don't want her to do too much because we want to be in control. <laughs> That's why contemplation and contemplative prayer is a daily practice. It takes a daily practice to keep ourselves out of the drama train. Just notice the next time you turn on the news where you, where you find yourself. I can watch the news. I haven't watched it at all while I'm on vacation. I just didn't want it. I just didn't want it into. I didn't. I wanted. I didn't want it in my sanctuary. And it's been wonderful not to have it. People don't really change by themselves. God changes us. If we can expose ourselves to God at a deep level, that's pretty. That's pretty clear, isn't it? If we can come together and expose ourselves to God at a deeper and deeper level, then God will free us from the triangle. God will free us from the triangle, from our narcissistic needs to get ahead. Of you. And we become wholehearted people. Our souls, our bodies, and our minds become aligned for a single purpose, to serve the world for the betterment of others. To serve the world and create, bring our geniuses and our talents to create social economic systems that are powerful, that create wealth. And no one saw that. We have the power, we have the infinite resources to create enormous amounts of wealth and prosperity, because that's what we are. Just meditate. Let's meditate.
We're going to start by just raising your arms up in the air and feeling the what, and what raised your arms? If that life force has an injury, your arms, your muscles may be big and strong, but they would not have raised. If that life force was not in you, you would not hear my voice. Your ears would be here and your brain would be here. But that life force that hears and the same life force that's speaking, we're just vehicles for communication. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, think about that. Just think of the miracle of your hands. We get down to the miracle of your heart space, which takes in all the oxygen spirit from out and, and turns it in mixes with the blood and turns it into matter pretty amazing isn't it we human beings are just miracles so just, just hold your hand on your hearts and just enjoy the fact and contemplate the, the miracle and the love of who you are And allow yourself to begin to get still. Allow your mind to get still. And the mantra I use is be still and know that I am God, not me. I am not me. So the thought, opinion, a judgment, floats across your horizon and tries to attach you to it. Let it go and come back to that mantra. I am not me. You might want to just slow down the breath, become conscious of your breathing. With some intention, just become conscious of your breath. Maybe taking some deeper breaths of joy and gratitude. As you exhale, exhale all the confusion. Breathe in the stillness and the clarity. And exhale out all the joy. Bring it back in. Joy from your heart. Let it go. Let it share it. Give and receive joy. Allow your focus to be on love and joy and prosperity. And you fetch yourself trying to figure out what that even means, let that go. Hold on to nothing.
And allow the vibration of the bell to take you deeper inside yourself.
allow the bell, the vibration of the bell, feel it taking you deeper inside.
Hello. If you're still here, I'm glad you're still here. I'm sorry. I just, uh, sometimes the, here in Puerto Rico, sometimes the internet is just not as good as it is in some other places of the world. And it just goes out. <laughs> and I disconnect. So my apologies for that. But thank you for joining me again today. If you're still here, just say hello and tell me how you're feeling. Um, uh, and uh, thank you for your patience with me as I'm dealing with some difficult, uh, challenging connection issues. But we're still here together. We're all still connected. Whether we see each other, we don't. We're connected by a bigger force than the Internet. Um, but my invitation is to you just to notice today how you get pulled into the drama triangle. When do you get trapped? And what things trap you? And the invitation is to let them go. Make your life into a personal sanctuary. Our lives are precious. We're precious. We're sacred. Turn your life into a sacred space. Have the courage and the res resilience to let go of all the drama and create a win world, win win world for everyone. Now tomorrow I will not be home because I'm going to be traveling across the island and I've tried before and it's just very difficult. So tomorrow I'm going to take a break and give you a break and I'll be back on Wednesday at the same time, but I will not be here tomorrow because I'm going to be traveling to the other side of Puerto Rico. And I have no idea what the internet's like over there. It's tough enough here in San Juan connected through cable. <laughs> so tomorrow I won't be here, but I'll be back on Wednesday. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. And may love and prosperity prevail. Thank you.